Okay. So moving on, these little blips that are sent on, on each aircraft, the, the four numbers below it are like a code. And if we want to, we've got the technology to convert that four little code into a, into a call sign. So for example, um, so one might come in with like with 1364, it might be an easy jet, for example, and it might be in that one. So we can convert that code into a call sign, easy jet, six four five or whatever the code is. And so we call them that. That's, the, that's basically their name while they're on the plane. So obviously when we want them to do something, we don't we know, we give them a name for them to do. So we obviously we tell the pilot what to do. We say that call sign, that aircraft type. Um, then the four figures underneath it, does anyone think of what those two or three figure numbers are below the four, four digits? Does anyone think what they are? No, below the four digits, there's another three or sometimes two figures. The quadrants. No, sometimes see they're going with an arrow down. The height, the height. The descending or descending, because you have to think of this radar twin as not as a two, two, you know, digit picture. It's, you know, it's 3D, basically. You have to think of it as 3D. It goes in and goes out. So obviously, if you've got two on top of each other, they might, the, you might look at them and think, oh God, they're really close together. But in reality, they could be, you know, thousands and thousands of feet apart because you have to think of this picture as a 3D picture. And the way we think of it as a 3D picture is by using those figures underneath the four digits to indicate how high or how low they are in the ground, in the air, should we say. So, the 240 is that the 2000. For whatever reason. 24,000 feet in a, a high in the sky. I don't think uh, uh, you want to lower down. UKP 151 08, and it's 800 feet above the ground, so that's really close down to the ground. But see how far, how high, and how low you can get. UKP 151, anyone here guess what that could be? Quite close to the ground. What could be quite close to the ground, you think? A small helicopter or something. Helicopter? Smaller aircraft. Yeah, smaller aircraft, yeah. They all fly close to the ground. Yeah. That UKP is a policeman. So that's, we've got a few policemen and we've got different uh, names. One of them is 151, I think. He's uh, quite close to the ground there. Now he's just climbing there. See, oh, it's just hot. Basically, he's just milling around down there. Another thing we can use here. And quite right to say helicopter. Is, do you see these dots behind it? Behind the main aircraft? See, that one's hardly got anything going. This one's got a few dots. Can anyone think of what these dots are? They're moving. Speed. So the, the further away they are, the faster they're going. So we can basically, each time the radar sweeps, it picks up one. The next time it sweeps, it's moved that far away. If this one hasn't moved very far, we can see it's not moving very fast at all. So this one, this is the 3417 um, number, with the, with the flight level 370, which means 370,000 feet in the sky. Um, he's obviously going very fast, so he's probably really high up, just speeding along, I don't know where he's going, probably maybe somewhere in Europe or something. Um, and then you've got the policeman who's just milling around, not moving very far. So these all, these all indications help us get a visual picture, because obviously in the tower, you could just look out the window, couldn't you? And you could see where things are. But when you're in radar, because it's a 3D picture, you need all these tools to help you get a mental picture um, of where things are. If we didn't have, for example, the, the figures underneath to indicate what level we're at, we would have to constantly ask them what, what's your altitude, what's your level, um, to help us maintain separation, because that's what we do here. Ultimately, we basically keep aircraft separated. That's our main job. Okay. Mike is one of our controllers here, and this is his what's called the strip display board. So besides what we can see on the radar, we also have these strip displays, 
each strip indicates one aircraft. Okay? And on this piece in each strip, we have basic information of what the call sign is. So what was the four digit code I said earlier? We if it's inbound to ourselves or outbound, we we convert, we have the technology to convert a four digit code into basically a name to call that aircraft. So we don't call them 7715, we would call them what is called, what is named on our flight is going to be. Okay? And then on that flight, this flight, we have other information, basic information, what the aircraft type is, because we need to know how, that would indicate to us how fast or slow it's going to be. Um, it would indicate whether it's a jet or propeller based aircraft, where it's from. See? It was, again, it's a four digit code, which uh, we learn so that we know. So it's not, for example, Spain, Barcelona, that L E B L E, Barcelona. That is just, it's just a four digit code that we learn that basically aviation will learn. Um, we, we know where it's coming from, like direction. So that basically, it's all indications that we can plan ahead. So we know, for example, this aircraft, an Airbus 319, which is a, if you didn't know, it's a two jet aircraft, um, and it's going to be coming from Barcelona. So it's going to be coming from probably from this kind of direction, okay? Because it's coming from Spain. It's not going to be coming from the north, is it? So it's coming from this kind of direction, an Airbus 319. And then once it gets like so it gets, then we have a time as well, 10:58. So 10.58, around this area, Keegan, which is, we know we're, we're going to get an Airbus 319. And you might think, well, why do you need to know all that? Because we have to plan ahead constantly. We have to think ahead and think about, you know, what aircraft are going to conflict with each other. Because besides these, we have um, other aircraft departing. And we want to know, for example, we might have a similar time, we might have a departure going to going to be going to the southeast and it might be a confliction and you, you're not reacting to when they come up you're being proactive and thinking well if he calls us i'm going to do this i'm going to turn in this way i'm going to turn that that way i'm going to descend this one i'm going to climb this one that way so that you're always planning ahead so they don't conflict with each other okay you might see that they're also in different colors okay could anyone think of why they might be in different colors Different yeah, but like for example, we've got two yellows here, and they're different planes. But from the same country, maybe. Mm, no. Oh, they're, they're coming in. We've got, okay, I'll put it this way. Majority of our strips are either blue or yellow. No, no. So, no. no. so majority of blue, blue or yellow. So aircraft at an airfield are either inbound outbound well done so they either indicate whether they're inbound to ourselves or departing from ourselves the yellow indicates that they're coming in and the blue ones indicate that they're departing and again it's all aids to help us maintain a visual picture so what are the green ones green ones um are in aircraft inbound to this little field in chester the set little airfield and because they're not coming in or out to us, so the tower wouldn't have any of them. But because the two airfields are so close together, we need to work together. So we need to know information about that airfield, about what they're doing. Because, for example, if we had an inbound from the south and they had a departure to the south from there, so they need to take on from there, and we've got something coming in. Do you see the problem? They want to climb and we want to descend. We need to know what they're doing. Again, it's working together to maintain ah. safety. Yeah, I've seen the red one. Yeah, yeah. 